is suing homeowners Jeff McNally and Angela Klingenberg for property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Judge Judy. Have a seat, please. Kevin. Hello, Judge. Case 2164, Ritter versus McNally Klingenberg. Thank you. You're welcome. Judy turns to Robert. Mr. Ritter, you own a piece of property. That is correct, Your Honor. And it's a residential piece of property? That is correct. And you use it as a business? That is correct. I would assume that this is your tenant. That is correct. Perfect. <laughs> Could you stand up next to Mr. Ritter? What is your last name? Mason. Mason. These are your neighbors across the street? Yes. I live side by side. So you're side by side, not across the street? I live across the street. Now, there came a time, Miss Mason, that you heard something that was unusual. Can you describe what you saw? I was startled by the sound of a big thud and my dog freaking out and ran to the window. And so I jumped up, ran to the window where the dog as well was running toward and looked out the window and seen the uh, truck that had just hit the air conditioning unit. Can you describe the truck? A white truck pickup. Had you seen that car before? Yes, in the driveway next door to me. So in his driveway? Yes. Did you see who was driving the truck? I did. Was it Mr. McNally? It was not. Who was it? The young lady beside him. Ran across the street. Klingenberg? Yes. When you looked outside, what did you see the truck do next? As I looked out the window and made eye contact, I seen... With her? Yes, I seen Jeff at the back end of the truck, right by the AC unit, kind of backing her off a little bit, kind of gave her a raised hand. So he was out there as well? Yes, positioned behind the truck. What did you do? Well, I jumped up and then I ran and um, actually grabbed my phone to take pictures because I did not want to be responsible for what had just happened to the air conditioning unit. As I could tell, it had been moved and hit. Do you have those photographs? Um, I did send those to Bob. He has pictures of those. Kevin? Yes. Want to get them? I immediately text Bob as well, this letting him know. So that day, the yeah. 20th of August, you went, took photographs of the truck? Yes, ma'am, and the yard and the air conditioning unit. Okay. Robert hands photos to Kevin who brings them to Judy. She reviews an image of a bent air conditioner grill. Mr. McNally. Yes, Your Honor. Where had you been camping? We were camping in a place called McCall, Idaho. Aside from you and Miss Klingenberg, who were there? My son. See how easy this is? (laughs) It's gonna get easier. (laughs) Do you understand? Jeffrey grins. Okay, now, is this your girlfriend? Yes. Okay, now now we got that clear. This is your girlfriend. You and your girlfriend were camping. Your son was with you. And what you were doing that day was you were trying to unload the truck with the camping gear, correct? Correct. Is the camping gear heavy? Yes. So somebody was driving the truck and somebody was schlepping the stuff out of the truck to put it away, right? Correct. Now, Mr. McNally, you don't want me to believe that either you or stand up, stand up, or this guy were just twiddling your thumbs and you backed up the truck so that you left Miss Klingenberg to empty the truck, right? You don't want me to believe that. No. Because that wouldn't be true. And that would be foolish and that would make you certainly unchivalrous, right? (laughs) Correct, Your Honor. Okay. So when you were first confronted with this, you said, oh, my girlfriend wasn't driving. Right? Right. So let's get it straight now, because that's what you wrote here in your answer. Oh, my girlfriend wasn't driving, my son was driving. That's not true. I don't know why you would choose to say my son was driving, not my girlfriend, unless she doesn't have a driver's license, because otherwise there'd be no difference whether your truck was being driven by you or your son or your girlfriend. Do you understand? No difference. Your truck being driven with you around hit his air conditioning unit. So what difference does it make? You have a driver's license? I do not. There you go! Perfect. I was not driving, Your Honor. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. You were driving, and he says you were. You see, and he says you, just a second. You didn't see his face just now. He says you were. Now, how did I know you didn't have a driver's license? Do you have a driver's license? Yes. Yes! But how did I know you didn't? Where do you think I got that from? We I got all... that from common sense because Mr. McNally doesn't look like a stupid man. And there would be really no difference if he drove the car, you drove the car, the son drove the car, the car, his car caused damage. But in order to perhaps 
have insurance cover it if he had insurance on the truck, do you? My insurance had actually elapsed. What? Okay, so it really didn't make any difference. If you had no insurance, you could have said she was driving. <laughs> but didn't think that far. Okay, so that's why we're here. We're here because you let an unlicensed driver drive your truck that was uninsured that you took on a camping trip. Is this coming together for me? It's close. So now we got that straight, right? The next thing we have to take care of are the damages. I see that the outer part of this air conditioning unit was definitely hit. Now the outside is merely a cover. So I need some evidence that this damage that he caused while she was driving damaged the mechanism of the air conditioner because you replaced the unit and you want him to be responsible for the unit, right? That is correct, Your Honor. I have to see a photograph because I don't have this photograph of the inside of this, I just have the photograph of the cover. I do not have the inside, but I do have from two HVAC companies that did go out to service it. One that did the replacement, the other that came out. Second opinion, as Jeff had asked us to do, which we did. Okay, I'd like to see you. This will be the second, and this is the actual invoice for payment. Kevin collects documents from Robert, then brings them to Judy. She reviews them. Oh, this is the second opinion. This says, second opinion call, four-year-old Goodman Air Conditioning Unit has been backed into. The unit has permanent damage to the condenser coil. Oh, well, that's the unit itself. That's just not the lipstick on it. That's the guts of it. This says, immediate repair, replace condenser coil and damaged panels, 3961. Correct. Replacing the unit instead may be an option to consider. And to do the whole job, what did he want, $5,000? The other side, thirty-four fifty to replace the identical unit. Okay, and to repair years. it. It was less he, money to, to replace, replace it. And to repair. Correct. Okay. Do you understand that now? I do. Okay. Thank you. So, Robert. based upon your request, he got a second opinion. Second opinion was for more money to repair. He chose the lesser of the two, which is to replace the unit. The ball is in your court, sir. Jeffrey closes his eyes. Caption, coming up. Garrett was actually driving. I don't believe it. You've had some time to reprocess it all. You would have had the boy, that's what you raised them for, mm -hmm. strong boys. You wouldn't have said, well, you just sit in the car while my girlfriend unloads it. Get ready, your eyes, so I can see your eyes. Perfect. And later today. I want to know how much you received from the insurance 874. company. 874 Then can you tell me, I had a check from the insurance company, which was a little over $1,300 from their appraisal. No, that's incorrect. Well, that's what you wrote, madam. That's your signature, that's what you wrote. A woman shrugs. The courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Robert, Jeffrey, and Angela. Robert Ritter claims homeowners Jeff McNally and Angela Klingenberg owe for property damage after hitting his air conditioner. Your car, uninsured as it was, driven by your girlfriend, damaged his property. Why don't you think that you're responsible for it? I uh, don't believe we hit it. The damage is on your truck, sir. There's a picture of your truck here. You want to see it. Or you don't have to see it. You'd be better off just saying, you know what? I don't have the money. You'd be better off just saying, because we started out wrong, you and I, Mr. McNally. And the wrong started off was, claimed his son was driving, even though Regina clearly saw his girlfriend. Okay, so that was a fib here. Actually, Your Honor, if, you, if I may, there was uh, just one front seat, a bent seat, and she was sitting in the middle, and Garrett was actually driving. I don't believe it, sir. You've had some time to reprocess it all. That's not true. She was driving because if you were unloading the truck, you would have had the boy, that's what you raised them for, mm -hmm. strong boys. You wouldn't have said, well, you just sit in the car while my girlfriend unloads it. You wouldn't have said that. Put your hand down. Take the hair out of your eyes so I can see your eyes. Perfect. Thank you. Judging for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,800, it's not a good idea, Mr. McNally, to show your son that it's the right thing to do, not to tell the truth. That's a very good lesson that parents should teach their children right from the get-go. And 
accepting responsibility for what was clearly an accident. I mean, she didn't mean to back into his air conditioner, right? Right. It happened. It was an accident. That's why they don't call it an on purpose. It was an accident. But once you have an accident, you have to accept responsibility. That's what you want to teach him. And if he lifts his hair, he'll be able to see and be able to hear better. <laughs> We're done. Thank you. This court is adjourned. Outside the courtroom, Angela, then Regina. We were all sitting in the front of the bench seat, so I was in the middle, and I think when she initially came out, she saw me sitting in the truck, but maybe she assumed I was sitting in the driver's seat, but I wasn't. No, nope, um, my vision was great that day. It did jump, make me jump, and my dog was freaking out, so I definitely knew something hit the house. I told him that my son and I were emptying firewood and that he may have hit his AC unit. It's just sad, you know, that they had to do that and that the young man had to be involved when he really didn't do it. Sarah and Judy. That case was a great demonstration of how being well prepared and doing the right thing can make the justice system work for you in the right way. He had all of his evidence laid out exactly how he needed to present it to you, and he had the damage evidence, he had the photographs, and he did the right thing. He didn't try and get a whole new unit for the $5,000. He said, I'll get the two estimates if that's what you want me to do. So it just shows how being prepared and having all your ducks in a row can really benefit you when you come into a court system. But my problem was telling the lie after you've sworn to tell the truth mm -hmm. in front of his son. Because those things remain embedded in your children. You want to be a good parent. The first thing you have to teach your children is to be honest. And if he sees that his father and the father's girlfriend are dishonest, that will become part of his fabric. Yeah. That's a mistake. So, I agree. But I think you are correct that it was a good lesson in preparing a case that made it easier to try. True. Kevin. Case 2171, Cosby versus Warren. All parties, please step forward. Shalea Cosby is suing mechanic Kevin Warren for the repair cost of a car and lost wages. Okay, Miss Cosby. According to your complaint, you parked your car near your home on a side street. You came out the next day and you found your car vandalized. Mm -hmm. the car was a 2017 Hyundai Elantra. Correct. Did you buy the car new or used? Used. And how much did you pay for the car? I put a down payment of thirteen fifty, I believe, thirteen fifty. So you financed the whole thing? Yes. And you have to have insurance on your car. You have to have liability, collision, all that other good stuff because you have a loan. Right. And you did have insurance. Mm -hmm. Now, came out, you looked at your car and it was vandalized. What was wrong with it? The back window was shattered and along the side passenger top quarter panel, back passenger door in the passenger mirror, it was shot. You have photographs of it? Yes. I'd like to see right here. Shalea hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews images of a damaged vehicle. Okay, did you notify your insurance company? I did. On what date? The same exact date, which was July 22nd, is when I came out and found my car vandalized. I submitted a police report. I have that right here. I'd like to take a look at it, please. And, um... Kevin collects a document from Shalea, then brings it to Judy. She reviews it. Okay, nothing with nothing. Okay, so you told the police about it on the 22nd. Yes. And when did you bring it in for the defendant to take a look at it? That was August 18th. She brought the car into you in August? Yes. And how long have you been in the auto repair business? 16 years. So you've dealt with insurance adjusters before? Yes. And did you make the appointment for the insurance adjuster to come and look at the car? They never came to look at it. Sometimes they just have me submit photos if they don't have anyone in the field to come look at the vehicle. Okay. Now, when the plaintiff came in and brought you the car, did you have a discussion with her? Yes, I did. And I want you to tell me the best of your recollection what she told you and what you told her. Okay, like she said, she brought me the vehicle on August 19th, and she told me she took it from another shop. She had a problem with another shop, getting the repairs done. Tell me what kind of problem you had with another shop. It was no problems with the other shops besides they didn't want to do the estimate on it and told me to talk to my insurance about it. And my insurance told me to find my own shop, and that's when I found Just it. Just a second. Did your insurance company send you to the first shop that you went to? Yes. And for some reason, that first body shop was unsatisfactory to you. Mm -hmm. So you took it to the defendant. 
This is what the story is. The story is the defendant still has your car, right? Mm -hmm. And he's keeping your car because he says you didn't pay for the repairs. It's your position that you gave him the entire check from the insurance company. Is that your position? Speak. Be very careful what you tell me. Caption, coming up. This is how her car looked when oh. she brought it to me. Oh, Miss Cosby, I have a feeling that you're not gonna like the outcome of this. Oh, no, I'm legit all the way around. Oh, so, really? Those are the after words. Just pictures. a second. Hustler. Oh, it's not a hustler, hustler at all, man. Absolutely a hustle. Shalea shakes her head. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Shalea and Kevin Warren. Shalea Cosby claims mechanic Kevin Warren owes for the repair cost of a car and lost wages. The insurance check went to you Correct. to cover the damage to the car. Correct. I'd like to see the check receipt that you received from the insurance company. Shalea hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. Look, we're gonna have trouble with each other, madam. Do you understand? This isn't the only check you got from the insurance company. If you're How talking much? about a check in 2020, that has no relevance to 2022 vandalism check. I want to know how much you received from the insurance company. 874.53. Then can you tell me, I had a check from the insurance company, which was a little over $1,300 from their appraisal. No, that's, that's incorrect. Well, that's what you wrote, madam. That's what you wrote. That's your signature, that's what you wrote. I see the paper. The totaling was thirteen seventy four fifty three. I didn't receive a full thirteen seventy four fifty three check from my insurance. I received eight seventy four fifty three and had to pay my deductible of five hundred dollars. When you brought your car into Mr. Warren, tell me what the conversation was. Before I got to him, I let him know what was going on, what I was going through. No, not let him know. I asked you what you said to him and what he said to you. First of all, you didn't like the first place that the insurance company sent you to. I don't know why. All I know is when you're dealing with this kind of thing, everybody's trying to make a little bit extra. And it's been my experience, and maybe I'm wrong, that when you have a little accident, you take your car into a body shop. Very often, if that's their business, they say, this is what you want fixed, this is what the damage was. And the person who runs the body shop or the owner of the body shop will say to you, I'll take whatever the insurance is, I'll work with the adjuster. Mm -hmm. That's what they usually do, correct, sir? Yes. Yes. And in this case, is that what happened? No. Is what I'm asking you, because your complaint is that he has your car, won't give it back because he's put a mechanics lien on it because he says that he did $6,000 worth of work on the car. He did work that was not approved by me just nor a second. my insurance. That, I'm just telling you, that's what he says. He did $6,000 worth of work on the car. Okay. Okay? But I have to tell you, Mr. Warren, that that has been my experience, and I'm very old that when you take a car in that's been in an accident, they say, you know what, I'll work with your insurance company. And we all know what that means. That means that whatever your insurance company gives you, they'll send me the check. That will be what I'm going to accept for the work. Now, what you're suggesting is that she authorized you to do $6,000 worth of work, and you didn't speak to the insurance company. I spoke with them plenty of times. Oh, what did they tell you that they were sending her? I have it here. I'd like to see it. I have three estimates here. No, no, I want to see from the insurance company. They're, no, they're, they're the insurance company estimates, not mine. I'd like to see it. Okay, here's the first one. Like she said, when she first brought her car to me, she had this one already for 873. Mm -hmm. Okay, three. so then what we do when we see more damage, we put what you call a supplement in. So I put a supplement in, and that's when they told me she has two claims. She has a claim for the auto body damage and a claim for the vandalism. The 874 is for the vandalism. If you look at these other two estimates, it's a totally different claim number. May I see that, it, please? That she put the claim in for. Mm -hmm. So these other two are for the, the auto body portion. Not for the vandalism? No, it's two different claims. When she brought you the car, was there body damage on the car? Absolutely. This oh, is how the car looked see, when she brought it to me. Can I see? I'm not just talking about that. Can I see, please? This is how her car looked oh. when she brought it to me. Oh, Miss Cosby, I have a feeling that you're not going to like the outcome of this. Oh, no, I'm legit all the way around. Oh, so, really? And those are the after Shh, words. Just pictures. a second. Just a second. This car was in a bad accident. Yes, correct. This car was in a bad accident. Hey, this car was in a bad accident shortly after you got it. Correct. 
Right. And you got a check from the insurance company to fix this. Right. How much was the check that you got from the insurance company to fix the this? The total in amount, I'm not sure, but I think it was like 2001 or 2002. And you didn't have it fixed. No one wanted to fix it. Well, he fixed so it. I... Just a second. Hey, Miss Cosby, mm -hmm. he fixed it. Without Just my approval. Time. What did you do with the $2,000? Oh, I paid my own personal bills because no one wanted to fix the car, so I have to keep living. Your case is dismissed. Okay. How's that? That's Your fine. case. Hustler. Oh, it's not a hustler, hustler. at all, man. Hustler. Absolutely. Absolutely a hustle. That's I actually think you're a that's hustler. That's why I'm not yes, helping that's you. That's fine. Because you had an accident in 2020, you got a check from the insurance company to fix it. I don't know how much that check was because you don't have a copy of that check. You brought the car into him and said, now I have a broken back window. I have a feeling, and I know it's only a feeling, but this is my program so I can vent that feeling, that you went to the first place to fix the car and you said to them, I want you to fix the front and the back, and they said no. That was for something else. You already got That's paid for that. They so you went to him. They didn't want to estimate oh, altogether. Oh, yeah, I don't believe you. You don't have to. I don't, well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. You don't have to. That's why your case is dismissed. That's fine. Now I'm getting to your counterclaim. Because you put a mechanics lien on the car? Yes, I have it here. Great. So? You've got a mechanics lien on it. She can't sell it. I'm not giving it back to her. I'm not ordering it back to her. You have the car? Yes. Sell it. I need that signature on that paper to be able to do so. It doesn't matter. From whom? From her. Or you can sign it just to say- Oh, I to, can't. To turn over. Oh. To say she has no more interest in the car. I can't. She does have an interest. The car's got a lien on it, sir. Absolutely. Okay? You're going to have to pay off this note. Do you understand? I don't think you're going to be able to get the money after you pay off the note. But you fixed the car. Absolutely. And I think that you're entitled to money for fixing the car on your counterclaim. She's going to pay on your counterclaim because I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to get any money on this car. I don't know what's going to happen with this car. I'm just not returning it to her. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm going to try to make you as close to whole as you can be because I think what happened to you was a hustle. That's what I think. Usually, usually I don't side with mechanics. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just been my experience, but I think that... I'm glad you changed I, today. I think that this is a hustle. $3,800, judgment for the defendant on the counterclaim. Thank you very much. This court We're adjourned. Adjourned. Outside the courtroom, Kevin Warren. Oh, I appreciate her decision. I believe she, she ruled the right decision because I brought all my paperwork and it wasn't no, it wasn't no other way to, to rule it. Well, she, she said she wanted me to help her get her car fixed and that she was going to get the insurance and pay me like she was supposed to do, but I guess once she got the money, she changed her mind. All mechanics aren't bad. Judy and Sarah. That was a surprise. That was. For me. <laughs> Did for not me. think it was going to go that way when we reviewed it earlier. When we talked about it, I looked at it. When we spoke about it, I said, you know, sort of using my life's history, take the car in, don't worry, I'll work with the insurance company, does a little bit. Extortion and emotional distress. Court come to order. All rise. Judge Judy. Have a seat, please. Kevin. Hello, Judge. Case 2156, Hickendorf versus Zarazosa. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Hickendorf, who is this gentleman? This was an attorney I hired in Mexico, kind of in the middle of the night when... He's an attorney? In Mexico. Okay. And my witness. Okay. So, trying to piece this complaint and answer together. You purchased a home from Mr. Zarosa? No, Your Honor. He purchased a home from you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. He purchased a home from you in Mexico? Yes. Where in Mexico? About five miles north of Rosarito, maybe 10 miles south of the border. How long have you owned the home? I owned the home about five years. How much did you pay for it? When I bought it, it was 180. How much did Mr. Zarzosa pay for the house? 245. On what date did he purchase the house? February the 9th. Were you present at the closing of the house? I was. When you closed on the house on February 9th, how much money did you receive? I was supposed to receive... No, no, no. You were supposed to receive $245,000. How much did you receive? I received a cashier's check for $15,000. 15000 15, 15 I received cash... 4500 and I received the next day through a, a wire transfer 4.6 million pesos or something like that. 
I have the paperwork. Just tell me what that translated to in dollars. It was $220,500. Okay. Well, if you have proof to how much the translation of pesos to dollars is, that means that you got a total so far without the down payment. Did he give you a down payment? Yes, $5,000. I was paid for my house. Hmm? I, have, I was paid for my house. No, I understand that. But this is the problem. Mm. Mr. Zarzosa says that when he took out the mortgage, he increased the amount that he was borrowing so that he had closing costs covered to the extent of, I think, $3,800 or $3,900? It was a total of almost $10,000. No, 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 no. Oh, $3,900. That's what I asked you. What's, what's $10,000? $10,000 comes out of nowhere. It was a difference, you said, of $3,900. Yes, ma'am. And so he wanted from you the difference. Well, the realtor gave me... Not the realtor. He wanted from you... The realtor told me that. I've never really spoke to Dante except for on February 22nd and the time that he came and looked at my house. But the realtor sent me a fake statement, which I looked at because it's a high school kid's piece of paper. And no. I said I was not making a refund. Okay. Well, you have to make a refund if you were paid more for the house than your bargain for with the purchaser. That's true. That's true. And the bank told me on April No, no, 1st, they can't tell you anything. Oh, really? If they documented something to you, then I'll read it. But you can't tell me what a bank told you. First of all, banks don't speak. Now, I'd like you to get what Mr. Zarzosa is handing me. This is from the bank. Dante hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. Well, I can't read this, but what I can't read is in Spanish, but I can read the numbers which indicate that you received Ms. Heckendorf a total of $249,544.22. Let me see. May I see that, ma'am? Absolutely. Because this is what that bank gave me right here. Kevin hands a document to Karen. And I did go with my witness to the bank on April 1st, and they told me that you that can't, was... The bank can't tell you anything. They told me that was the they correct can't, amount. A bank can't tell you. They can give you a document, which I will read, but a bank can't right. tell you anything. This is not really a case about this contract. Yeah, it is. It started this way. They're saying that that bank sent me the wrong amount of money? Yes. That's oh. what it says. That's what that says. That's what this says. That's what that says. I imagine anyone can write what they want, but I was not paid the wrong amount of money. Well, the bottom line of it was, eventually, you gave him back $2,800 of the 39 that he said that he was entitled to. Is that correct, no. Ms. Heckendorf? No. You never gave him $2,800? I signed a contract and gave him $2,800 under duress. He took my dogs and my cat, and he took I, my property. I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. When mm -hmm. I ask you a question, I expect an answer. Mm -hmm. You gave him $2,800, and you gave him the $2,800 because he believed and told you that he had taken out extra money in order to cover his closing costs. And you got that money, and he wanted that money back because he was going to have to pay for it through his mortgage. I have never heard that these were closing costs. This is the first I've heard about closing well, costs. Well, I'm going to tell you and this. I I'm going to stop, never heard about stop, closing talk, costs. stop talking. Mm -hmm. Stop talking. Okay. Caption coming up. And I'm keeping it very simple. Okay. You're going to want to keep it very complicated, and I, madam, are going to keep it very simple. So the bottom line is you stayed in the house for free. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Karen and Dante. Karen Heckendorf claims her home buyer, Dante Zarzosa, extorted money by keeping her pets in property. Dante is countersuing for false accusations and lost wages. Good, this is your piece of evidence. Mm -hmm. Your piece of evidence says that you got $249,544.22. No. That's what it says. No, it doesn't. Okay, that's what it says. You gave him $2,800. He wanted $3,900, you gave him $2,800. What you're suing him for is- He also is, wanted $2,500. I'm going to dismiss your case. Okay. It's just as easy for me to send you back to Mexico. 
once you closed on this house, according to what I looked at, Ms. Heckendorf, you asked if you could stay in the house because your new house wasn't ready to close escrow. Is that correct? That's a yes or a no. Yes. And so you closed the house on February 9th, and he allowed you to stay in the house. When were you supposed to vacate the house? March the 1st. I paid Just a, that That's a date. March 1st. Mm -hmm. And between February 9th and March 1st, how much did you pay him in rent? I gave that's, him the just, money for the casita. Just a second. Yes. That's an amount between February 9th and March 1st. 2,370. So that was a month's rent. Is that what you received? No, Your Honor. How much did she pay you in rent between February 9th and when she was supposed to vacate March 1st? She no. would have paid you rent Nothing. in advance. Nothing. Show me proof that you paid him anything for rent on February 9th. Karen hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. Did you ever receive from this agent $2,370? No, Your Honor. Well, do you know who he is? Yes, I do know. That's the realtor that uh, represented both of us on the purchase. And you never received this was on February 9th. He acknowledges he signed that he received $1,620 as in for the last month's rent and $750 security deposit as well as prorated rent of $120. I don't know what prorated rent is for. It was for um, the end of January. They moved in a few days before. Who moved in? The people that rented the casita. And that's part of the house? Yes. What is that? I have two houses on the property, the one I lived in and the casita. And Dante gave me a email that if I gave him this money from the casita, that I could live in the front house until March the 1st. I have that Just email. Just a second. When he bought the house, mm -hmm. did he or did he not buy the casita as well? Yes, he did. A, so he bought the casita as well. So it belonged to him. This rent belonged to him. Only so what I do you mean? It. He's not giving you anything. If he buys a house and there's another property, he owns that property. He owns whatever rent was due for that property. So what you're saying is, let me cut to the chase. What you're saying is you claim, he said to you, I've just paid you a quarter of a million dollars for your house which includes the casita. Your house isn't ready yet to close escrow. I will let you stay in the house free if you let me keep the money from the casita's rent. Yes. Oh, and fine. I have an so email. that the bottom line, don't, don't speak, it doesn't look like you're losing and so far. I may not be finished with you. And so I had I, you're the casita. speaking, you're trying to speak over me. Well, and I'm keeping it very simple. Okay. You're going to want to keep it very complicated, and I, madam, are going to keep it very simple. So the bottom line is you stayed in the house for free from February 9th or 10th until it was supposed to be until March 1st. That was your understanding. You were staying in his house for free. I didn't have to rent the casita. I don't care whether you had to or whether you didn't have to. You were staying in your house that you sold to him for free until your new house was ready. That's a yes. I felt that. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel. You sold him your property and mm -hmm. you took advantage of a piece of that property, the casita, in order to negotiate yourself a free three-week rent until your house is ready. Now, you may stand there and look at me in that smug way, but you and I both know that that was a deal you made for yourself. Yes, I agreed, okay. I agreed to rent the casita ahead of time before I moved out and give him the money so that I could stay in the property until my house closed as for well one week. Pretty, pretty tricky. May have been March pretty, the 6th. Pretty tricky. Bottom line is you stayed in his house for free. Okay. And then... What the rest of the case is about is that you claim that he changed the locks on the door before March 1st, and in the house you had your pets, and he held ransom your pets until you gave him what turned out to be $2,800. That's your complaint. He changed the locks on February 28th. Where 22nd. were you when he changed the locks? February 22nd. 22. Where were you when he changed the locks? I was lock? in my office in San Diego. Okay. And how did you find out that the locks were changed on the door? Dante um, sent me an email that I found later 
admitting to what he did, but no, I... Don't. I asked you a question. I was at my uh, office, and he called me on the phone, okay. and he said, this is Dante Zardosa. And I have... My him. way. Mm -hmm. He called you in the office. Mm -hmm. That's how you found out he changed the locks. Yes. That's an answer. Approximately mm -hmm. what time did he call you in your office? It was about 6.30, 6.45 in the evening. 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you claim he said to you and what you said to him. This is Dante Zerzosa. I have your two dogs. You're never going to see them again if you don't pay me $3,900. Now, that wasn't the first time you had heard about this $3,900. That was I not the first time. I heard about it on February the 9th. No, the right. 8th. Sorry, February the 8th, I'd heard about it. And so you told him after that that you would, or you told him, or you told your lawyer, is that you? Yeah, now you me. can stand up. Sure. I met him. Shh, don't speak. Okay. Caption, coming up. On what date did you get your pets back? Well, I didn't actually get them. My friends went and begged for the animals. Don't, don't, don't tell me what they did. They gave them to, and they gave them to my friends. Stop, them, please. Okay. Sit. No. Karen's lawyer sits. Whitney smirks. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Karen and Dante. Karen Heckendorf has accused her home buyer, Dante Zarzosa, of extortion by threatening her pets. Dante claims Karen owes him for making false accusations. Your last name, sir, is? Mena, Your Honor. Mena. Uh, Mr. Mena, you're an attorney in Mexico? Uh, yes. Okay. Are you a real estate attorney? Yes, civil attorney, real estate as well. You understand what this is about, and you understand if you're a real estate attorney, that sometimes people take a mortgage that's beyond what they need in order to cover their closing costs. You understand that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's not an unusual thing. I bought and sold many homes. A lot of people do that. And when were you first made aware of the fact that the defendant was at least claiming that there was an amount that he had incurred debt on by way of a mortgage in excess of what your client in Mexico was supposed to receive in the amount of $3,900? February the 22nd, something like that. 222. And when she came to your office, now we no longer have attorney client privilege, sir, because she's brought you here as a witness, so you're going to testify sí. to every conversation that you Absolutely, have. Yes. Do you understand that? Absolutely. Okay. She came to your office after she found out that the locks were changed. Actually, I was at home. That was at night. So when for the first time, sir, did you hear about this money that the defendant was claiming that he was owed? Uh, Mr. Dante, um, uh, call me. I want you to answer my question. Yeah, yes, I'm... My question is, when she called you the night of the 22nd at your home, did she tell you at that time or soon thereafter that there was a discrepancy that he was alleging with regard to the closing fees? Not actually, no. No, she didn't tell you anything. She told you that he just illegally evicted her and changed the locks. Yes, and at the same time, because of the some situations regarding a deal she has on the sale of the property. Your client knew as of February 8th that the defendant was alleging that she owed him money from the closing costs. That's clear. That's what she told me. Mm -hmm. Now, they had had clearly ongoing discussions about this mm -hmm. from February 8th or 9th when the deal closed and she got her money and she's living rent free. So what I want to know, when did she share with you, not that there was an illegal eviction, not that her pets were in the house, when did she share with you that he was claiming that she owed him money? And I'm not excusing self-help. When did she tell you that? Because she knew it at the beginning. She knew it before she called you. I have the um, uh, communication from Mrs. Uh, Karen. At the time we filed the complaint in the DA office, this is district attorney office. This is the time when she uh, expressed me the whole facts. Oh, so she didn't tell you the whole facts when she called you at home on the 22nd? Uh, no, because she was very bored, worried. She was concerned regarding okay, the baby. Okay, don't tell me that. Okay. That's it. Now I got it. So I got what you're dealing with. I understand who I'm dealing with. Okay, on what date did you get your pets back, Miss Heckendorf? The 22nd. Okay, what time? Well, I didn't actually get them. I got them the next day because my friends went and begged for the animals. Don't, don't, don't tell me what they did. They gave them to, And they gave them to my friends. Stop it, please. Okay. Sit. Yeah. The lawyer sits. I just asked you 
when you got your animals back. So you got your animals back on the same day as he changed the locks on the house. They were given to friends. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So they were returned to you the same day because if they were given to your friends at your direction, your friends were your agents. Yes. Good. Only the dogs. He had my cat the next day. Did you have a cat or was it an outside cat? Is it an outside cat? It's an outside cat that lives indoors and they, they okay, put it's the an outside... doggy door down so the cat couldn't get out. Okay. He told me he had my cat. cat. Okay. When did you give him the $2,800? About 5 o'clock on Wednesday the 23rd. Is there a writing of the exchange of that money? I'd like to see it. Dante hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. I can't read this. The plaintiff has a translated version. Can I see the translated copy, please? I speak. About what? About that paper. Yeah. The, he was the one that drew it up. He could tell you, Your Honor, and... and, and, and no, 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 I want this. Did you draw this up? Can I see it? Yeah, sure. Kevin, give it to him. Kevin brings the document to the lawyer. Thank you. Did you draw that? Y yes, I participated. What does it tell me? It's translated. Uh, don't speak. Do you have the translation of this document? I yes, that? I gave it to you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, number five. Very clear, this is the agreement that Mr. Zarzosa receives from Ms. Heckendorf $2,800 for concept of refund of pending payment. The previous amount is received fully. Therefore, the debt is liquidated. And number six, the seller, Ms. Karen Heckendorf, grants the broadest waiver derived from the investigation file presented before the district attorney's office. I assume that that was your complaint mm -hmm. and with a file number filed against Mr. Zarzosa by not keeping any legal action present, past or future, derived from the present business. This is the police report they're talking about. I don't care what this says, is you've settled all of your disputes with each other. This says you've settled everything that had to be settled. Okay, but what the translation suggests is by this document, each of you understood that you were giving him money, he was not going to follow through with anything that had to do with the criminal complaint or with a criminal complaint against him. You went your own merry way. Am I crazy or is that what this document says, sir? You are the lawyer. Yes, it says so. That's what it says so. So I wanna know why you're all here bothering me. You settled everything. You got back your stuff, you got out of your house, you got your personal property. He has a counterclaim for false accusations and loss of wages as a result of whatever. This document says you've resolved everything with each other. So why are you here? I did not sign that document under usual circumstances. I hadn't had any sleep and I was coerced. And he said he was gonna burn my furniture or he was going to sell it in the year that it would take me to prosecute him under this Mexican uh, contract. Put it down, sir. The case is over. If he wanted to The sue case is me, over. You're a pretty savvy lady, madam. You had an attorney that you consulted. He was there when this document he wasn't was on signed. The real I, uh, deal. He was there he when was the, only on goodbye. this Goodbye, we're in done. The case is night. dismissed. So is your counterclaim. This Bye. court is adjourned. Outside the courtroom, Karen, then Dante. This was really a case about Dante taking my animals for hostage and extortion. I didn't steal anything. The only reason I agreed to give him $2,800 was because he said he was gonna burn or sell my furniture. I'm gonna enjoy my house, thank you, Karen. Judy and Sarah. That lady was never intimidated into anything. I don't think so either. <laughs> she knew she had gotten an extra few bucks at the closing. She knew that she was really living there rent free, which is really- After an accident, Court come to order, all rise. Judge Judy enters. Have a seat, please. Kevin approaches. Hello, Judge. Case 2159, Baker versus Escobar. Thank you. You're welcome. This case involved an automobile accident. Ms. Baker, you are seeking $10,000 from Mr. Escobar, who you claim caused the accident, and you a lot of grief. The accident happened on what date? It happened on May the 18th, 2021. Was your car insured at the time? Yes. Yes, and your car was insured at the time? Yes. I don't want you to get into the specifics of the accident just yet. What I'd like you to tell me was prior to May 18th, who were you working for? Brand Lighting. What were you doing for them? 
I drove a forklift, I load and unload trailers. How long had you worked for them? About a year and a half. Prior to that, where did you work? I think it was distribution. From when to when? Um, I worked for them for about four years. Prior to that, were you constantly employed or were you on disability? Yes, no, I was constantly employed. Mm -hmm. I was constantly employed. Okay, prior to working for the place where you had been working in May, were you ever on any sort of disability? Yeah, I... I From when to when? May the 19th, I applied for disability because I went to the doctor. No, the no, 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 no. I'm not talking about it as a result of this accident, Ms. Baker. I'm asking you, were you ever on disability before this accident? No. You were injured before this accident. You had a back injury yes. before this accident. When did that take place? That happened in 1999. And what happened in 1999? We had opened up the pick module and the supervisors was there and uh, we was walking them to show them the, the new opening of it. And the floors was made out of uh, gates, but the gates wasn't pushed together and so my foot slipped down between them and my back slammed into one of the steel beams. And were you out on any sort of a disability after 1999? Yes, ma'am. From when to when? Well, I was out on disability with that. And if I was I'm out for I'm talking about... Years. Yeah, for, I was out for two years. In 1999? Mm-hmm. How long were you out on disability? I was out for two years. And the nature of your disability was the back injury? Yes, ma'am. So you went back to work in 2001? Yes, ma'am. For whom? The hospital. What were you doing there? I was a supervisor in the storeroom. How long were you working there? I worked for three years. After 2001, was there ever a period of time that you went back on disability? I'm trying to think, yes. And from what year to what year? I want to say it was like 2005. My thumb got amputated off of my hand at work. And how long were you out on disability? A year and a half. After that? I think that's, that's it for the disability. I went to work after that. This accident occurred on May 18th, 2021. After May 18th, 2021, did you go on disability? Yes. From when to when? Um, from May of 2021 to August of 2022. And the nature of your disability on all three occasions was injury to your back? No, one of them was when my hand, my thumb got amputated off of my right hand. Did you have any surgery on your back ever? No, ma'am. And you received disability from May of 2021 to August of 2022 in what amount? I think it was $1,160 I mean, $1, every two weeks. So about $2,200 a month? Yes. And what happened in August of 2022? Uh, benefits was exonerated. Ceased? Yes. And you went back to work? No, I have not been back to work. How are you supporting yourself now? I just apply for uh, unemployment right now to try to help me with my bills and my rent because um, I'm behind in uh, everything. May 2021, what was the date of the accident? May 18th, 2021. According to your complaint, you were traveling in the right lane of a highway. The Defendant was traveling in the middle lane? Correct. And he veered off into your lane in order to make a right turn, struck your car? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. He says not true. His response says that he was in the middle lane, he was going into the right lane, and you sped up and wouldn't let him in. Is that what your defense Correct. is? Your and your cars collide. Is... Or she hit you? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. That is not true. And the damage to your car, which was the red car, was where? He caught me from the, when I swerved, so he caught me from the side and he slid up to the, to the bumper. So he hit the bumper right there and that, that part of do it. Do you have is, photographs? I do, I have photos. I'd like to take Your a Honor. photographs, please. Melissa hands a photo to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. So may I explain to you what happened, Your Honor? With what? May I explain to you how the incident occurred? Caption. Coming up. When did you get these estimates? Oh, I just went to go get those estimates yesterday. I talked to them on the phone before then. No, I don't care whether you talk to them on the phone. These estimates say you just got them yeah, within the last couple of days. Yeah, no, well, this accident happened a year ago. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Melissa and Jesus. Melissa Baker claims fellow motorist Jesus Escobar damaged her vehicle while changing lanes. Well, this was your car. Yes, that's my car. And this is the passenger front panel. When he hit me, the bumper was hanging. And so then I had to pull it off 
because it was dragging the ground. I couldn't drive my car like that, so I ended up pulling the whole thing off. And so that's how come you see that damage on the other side of the car, too. You have pictures of your car, sir? Yes. I'd like to see them. Jesus produces photos, then hands them to Kevin, who brings them to Judy. She reviews images of damage to the passenger side of a vehicle. Anybody have a police report? I have an a over-the-counter report, because once the... Once no, no, no. I just asked if anybody has a police report of this accident. I I'd like to take a look at it. Melissa hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. Where did you get this from? I went to the police department the next day and did an over-the-counter report because he asked me not to call the police. Just a second. Scene. My question to you is where did you get this from to make a picture of it? Oh, I had took a picture of it with my phone and, and emailed it to my attorneys. And so when they sent me a, a collective packet, that's how they sent it back to me. Did either one of you receive a, a citation or a ticket as a result of this accident? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Were the police called? No, Your Honor. Why not? Uh, Mr. Escobar, when he got out the car, he asked me if I was okay, and he asked me to not to call the police because he's a truck driver and he did not want that point on his driver's license. Okay. He also asked for me to pull over to the side of the road over on 4th Street so that we wouldn't be blocking the intersection and the traffic. Well, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of his uh, insurance information. You remember that conversation, Mr. Escobar? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And so you said you would pay for the damage to her car? I offered, I was trying to Just be Just a second, generous. you yes. said I'd... Yes. Well, that's a yes. yes. That sounds reasonable. You said, I'll pay for the damage. Don't call the police. I don't want this to be on my license. I'll pay for the damage. Correct. Right? It's bored to it, but hopefully I could have a chance to um, uh, tell you my, what my side of the story is. But yes, that's, no, that's what I, I said. No, I passed your side of the story. Okay. Now I have an accident. You say one thing, she says another. We're moving on to the next issue. The next issue is she says and you acknowledge that you told her, please don't call the police. I'll pay for the damage. Correct. I don't want to go through my insurance. Yes. Okay, so you agreed to pay for her damage. Yes. Do you have an estimate for your damage? Yes, I do, Your Honor. I'd like to take a look at it. So I actually have two uh, different estimates. Did you ever have the car fixed? No. Okay. Melissa hands documents to Kevin, who brings them to Judy. Thank you. She reviews them. What kind of car is this and what year? It's a 2012 Kia Optima. And you own that outright? Yes. When did you get these estimates? Oh, I just went to go get those estimates yesterday. I talked to them on the phone before then. No, I don't care whether you talk to them on the phone. These estimates say you just got them yeah, within the last couple of days. Yeah, no, well, this accident happened a year ago. Yes. So I called some people to get some estimates and they gave me some, they gave me some estimates over the phone. And so I called Mr. Escobar and I told him what the estimates were. No, no, listen to me carefully. What you just gave me were estimates that you got two days ago, which is right. a year and a half after this accident. Right. Well, okay. I want to know where the estimate is for $1,700. That's the estimate that okay. you called him with the next day after the accident. No, yeah. The I next did. day after the accident, you called him and said, it cost me $1,700 to fix it. These well, say $4,600. Just show me the estimate Listen, for $1,700. These are from his, these are from his, uh, that's from his insurance company. Actually, when I called him to give him the estimates of the people that I talked to on the no, phone, he no. didn't respond listen, to me. Listen to me carefully, madam. I'm reading from your complaint. Mm -hmm. I took my car in for an estimate. Yes. The next day, and I texted him the amount. He said that he did not have $1,700, and he asked if I could wait for a month. Mm -hmm. I needed to get my car fixed before then, and he suggested that we go through insurance after all. You took your car in, according to you. Yes. You got an estimate for $1,700. Okay, I didn't get it in right. Okay. Okay, that's... You got an estimate for $1,700. That's... He said, I can't get you the money right away, so you went through insurance. Correct. Okay, so all of a sudden, it doesn't grow into $4,600. Well, this, may I? Yeah. Good. Okay, so um, the man gave me the estimate for the $1,700, but what he did inform me was that once No, you can't tell me what he informed you, Matt. Well, basically you can't, what, Not basically. Uh, well, you, can I tell you what basically. these people, can I no. tell you what these people no. said? You can't tell me what those people said either. Well, I was trying to explain to you why it went to $4,300, but it, it's it, It's thing. not going to $4,300. Yeah, the okay. initial cost to fix your car was $1,700. You, as a matter of fact, accepted a check 
from his insurance company for $1,300. I asked my attorney just if I was second. supposed to. I'm sorry. Just, you accepted a check for his insurance company for $1,300. Then, according to you, they canceled the check. Okay? And I'll see the letter why they, why they canceled the check. Okay. Okay. And when you accepted the check, you signed a general release because the insurance company doesn't send a check unless you sign a general release for anything and everything surrounding the accident that took place on May 18th. That's what you sign. When you accept the check from an insurance company with regard to an accident, that's what you sign. I, okay. I had no clue as to what it was. You know, uh, Your Honor, I referred to my uh, attorneys and asked them what I should do, and that's no, what just they advised me, to do, advised me to do. That's hearsay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's hearsay. You can't tell me that. There is no attorney that would say, sign a release, and then we'll go on from there. Well, I asked them if <laughs> you I don't sign to accept okay. the check. You no longer have that attorney, correct? Y you no longer... No. The attorney said goodbye. Now, after this accident, which happened on May 18th, when was the first time you saw a doctor? The very next day. Let me see. Here's all my doctor's notes. No, let me just see from the next day. Okay. Melissa hands documents to Kevin, who brings them to Judy. She reviews them. Says patient is disabled as a result of chronic back pain that affects her mobility and inability to perform work as required. That's me. Right? And now you work for whom? Brand lighting. This is also the well, report Just a second. What do you do for brand lighting? Oh, I drive a stand-up reach machine, so yeah. I have to get on and off. And I also drive a forklift, sit down mm -hmm. forklift. I have to clamp up and down it to get on and off. I got it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Escobar, you agreed to pay the damage to the car, correct? Yes. Um, can I speak on that? I'd like you to hear your <laughs> excuse. Caption, coming up. You did not present to me anything with a medical write-up that suggests at all that this accident caused you to lose anything. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Melissa and Jesus. Melissa Baker has accused fellow motorist Jesus Escobar of hitting her vehicle while changing lanes. Mr. Escobar, you agreed to pay the damage to the car. Correct. Correct? Yes. Um, can I speak on that? I'd like to hear your <laughs> excuse. Okay, at this point, at the time of the accident, which was date of loss, May 14, 2021. May 18th or May 14th? 14th. May 14th? 14th. May I see it? That's not true. It says date of loss. Jesus hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. Uh, Shh. Okay, so this insurance company found that there is a comparative negligence statute in California, which means to the layperson that they will look at an accident and they'll say, well, it's not 100% his fault or not 100% your fault, but they looked at the accident and they said, our insured, that would be you, is 75% responsible for this accident. And they found, which is not dispositive for me, that you were 25% responsible for the accident. You agreed to pay to have the car fixed. Yes. That's um, the bottom line. Can I explain that why? Go ahead, um, you could explain all your life, but you agreed to have the car fixed. I was trying to be reasonable due to the fact that I was a truck driver. Mm -hmm. I'm off for three weeks, come home a day or half a day, and then I'm off for another three weeks. I was trying not to go to court. I was trying not to make things worse. And you agreed to pay to have the I car agreed. fixed. I, I, I agreed to pay. I don't care what it was. Nobody put a gun to your head. No. You know, nobody put you under a cattle. What was it, that thing? I have no idea. Yellowstone? Where I they, know. I know what you're what talking about. What is that about. called? I don't know. It's a cattle guard. Cattle guard. Yeah. Nobody hid you in a cattle guard. <laughs> you said, don't call your insurance. I will pay for the damage. So you've got to okay. pay for the damage. And evidently it hasn't bothered you enough because you haven't had the car fixed. Do you still own the car? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, you have fixed for $1,700. Now, you have no medical people here, do you? No. There are no witnesses over no. there. You've had a long-standing back problem. Went to a chiropractor, you went to a lawyer, on and off disability because of your back problem, and you did not present to me anything with a medical write-up that suggests at all 
that this accident caused you to lose anything. And if you have it, I'll be more than happy to look at it. Okay. Uh, my attorney's highlighted that part right there. Melissa hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. I just looked at this. That's I'm sorry, I must have gave you the wrong thing. Okay. Well, do you have the right thing? Yeah. I thought it was talking about the acute back pain. No, it, I don't... Not that I don't care about your acute back pain, <laughs> but since you don't have an expert here to testify that that it's back not pain do any that good. That was as a result of this accident and the pro forma thing that you gave me a check off, patient has chronic back pain, doesn't do it for me. So unless I have a write-up okay. from a hospital, from a medical facility, that this accident that happened, he says, on the 14th, you say it happened on the 18th. It happened on the 18th, ma'am. It happened on the 18th. Yes, yes, oh. Your Honor. Uh. I'm sorry, I've had this inf Oh, here it is. I'm Melissa hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy. She reviews it. Okay. Doesn't do it. Okay. Doesn't do it. He's got to pay to have your car fixed. $1,700. We're finished to your judgment for the plaintiff. Thank this court is adjourned. adjourned. I'm satisfied. I'm just glad that the whole thing is over with. Uh, I'm just glad that uh, this is finally over. <laughs> it's been a year and a half almost, and my car is still damaged. Pretty much, yes. I was in the middle lane trying to make a right. The guy fabricated a lot of that stuff, but I just really want to be done with this. She got road rage and speed her car up and hit me. Actually, he just apologized a whole lot. He was feeling really good when he was driving. He was revving his engine a little bit because he has a charger. Music was blaring loud. He wasn't paying attention. I don't know how I could cut someone off and the person that and the person I'm cutting off would end up ends up in front of me. I was going about my merry way and I seen him coming towards me through my, my from my peripheral vision. How is that how is that possible? And I feel sorry now that I even didn't even call the police and have them to come out there to the scene. I know it's a COVID time, people was having a hard time with you know making their money and the jobs and stuff. When the guy asked me not to call the police, I wasn't giving him a hard time, but then look what he does. Accidents happen. Be careful out there. Sarah and Judy. I think this is a good lesson for people like the defendant who, for whatever reason, he was a truck driver and didn't want maybe the points on his license or even the hint of a car accident to be on his record if that's his business. However, I think it could have saved him from, number one, making a gratuitous promise to pay for the damages to her vehicle, which he might not have had to had a police officer come out and made a report. And maybe they would have found him less at fault than his own insurance company. And then that's he true. wouldn't have been so quick to offer to pay for the damages. Or Conversely, the plaintiff may not have mentioned anything about any back pain, and if today was the first time she was going to bring it up, I'm sure you wouldn't have offered her anything. Thing. Well, she didn't bring it up. She's had chronic back pain yeah. now for 22 years. Of course. Her allegation is that this accident exacerbated that back pain that she's had for 20 years. Then you have to come in with a medical team yep. to talk about what the nature of her injury was before, how it was changed as a result of this accident. Without that, a pro forma note that says so-and-so has chronic back pain and she can't work is not a reason to award you $10,000 for personal injury. Yeah, I agree. Anyway. I just think it's a good lesson that... Dallas Lee, for child care services, late fees, and property damage. Court, come to order. All rise. Judge Judy enters. Have a seat, please. Kevin. Hello, Judge. Case 2175, Grimm versus Lee. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Ms. Grimm, in what state do you live? Missouri. In what county? Jackson. You have a daycare center? An in-home child care, yes. For how long? I started September of 2022. What is your house like? I have a single family home with a finished basement and then like an attic type, it's two bedrooms. House has two bedrooms? No, up in the attic has two bedrooms. It's technically a three bedroom house, but it has made six rooms. And how many children do you have? I currently have seven. How old are they? 14, 13, 11, eight, five, and three, and one, 18 months. Three and 18 months. I'm sorry, she's four now. She just turned four. So the older ones go to school. Does the five-year-old go to school? Yes. And the eight-year-old goes to school? Correct. So you have two little ones at home? Uh, my four-year-old goes to early childhood, half a day. So you have one child at home during Correct. the day? Correct. And one half a day? Yes. And you have three children? Yes, ma'am. How old are they? I now have a three-year-old, a one-year-old, and a five-month-old. And those were the children that you enrolled in her daycare center? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Scrim, 
what kind of licensing do you have an application that do you have to make in order to run an in-home daycare center in Missouri? So in the state of Missouri, as long as you have under six children, you do not have to have a license. As long as you have six children in total in the house or six children... That I'm watching. That you're watching. Correct. Because my school children are not considered watching like under the law. Well, you certainly have to watch your 18 well, month old. Yes, he's the only one. That's why I've always kept five children or less. It is your claim that Miss Lee entered her children into your program. She paid you for a certain period of time. She owes you for two weeks. Correct. And with those two weeks, two weeks that her children were actually in care. Correct. Which two weeks were those? They are the last two weeks of October. Of 2022. Correct. And the children were in your program. Correct. Miss Lee, were the children in Miss Grimm's program the last two weeks in October? Yes, ma'am, they were. Did you pay her for the last two weeks in October? No, ma'am, I did not. How much were you supposed to pay her? For the last two weeks, it was supposed to be $600 because our agreement was $600 every two weeks. Okay, so it was supposed to be $600. Yes, ma'am. So now the ball is in your court so far. Miss Grimm, we're not talking about a late fee. We're just talking about these two weeks. Correct. First... Tell me your reason for removing the children. I removed my children out of her care because my children, every time that I picked them up, it was either they were harmed or injured or my son, my three-year-old, would tell me something had happened while I was gone at work in her care. My son had told me on numerous accounts that she hit him herself. And then he also told me that her 15-year-old son, or 14, I'm sorry, had also spanked him. And when I did ask him, well, I asked her actually, I said, who is Trey? Because he said, mommy, Trey hit me. We were getting in the car. They normally do help me get in the car with my three children, seeing I have one who's barely you get, You're getting... You get going all over the place. Yes, ma'am. So they normally help me get in the car with my children. So they were outside with us. And my son said, Mommy, Trey hit me like this. I didn't know any Trey. So I asked her, who is Trey? And she said, that's my son. And he said, that's me. He was standing right there next to her. He said, I'm Trey. And I said, Bryson said that you hit him. And he said, yes, I hit Bryson. He said, I popped him because Bryson wasn't doing right. Bryson didn't want to go to timeout. On what day was that? That was on October 25th. And what was the last day that your children attended? October 27th. Okay, so despite the fact that Trey, your Trey? Yes, ma'am. Slapped the three-year-old, said that he slapped the three-year-old, mm -hmm. you let him stay there for an extra two days? Yes, ma'am. Just, just that's a yes. Now, where were you working that you had your children in daycare? I was working as a CNA. What is that? A certified nurse's assistant. Where? It's a, um, Nursing like a rehab. Home? Yes, ma'am. When did you start working there? I started working there in September. September of 2022? Yes, ma'am. Beginning of September? Yes, ma'am. And when did you stop working there? I stopped working there October 27th. That was my last day. If I were to call, would they tell me that they terminated you or you quit? I quit. Did you quit on the 27th? Yes, ma'am. And what about now? Are you working? I am. Who are you working for? I work through a temp agency, working per diem at different locations as a CNA. And who takes care of your children? My stepmom. My children, I... Just a second. And when did you start that job? I started that job about four weeks ago. So in December? Yes, ma'am. Late November or so. Caption, coming up. You left the children there until the end of October. It couldn't have been so disturbing for you, madam, to leave the children there until the end of October, another six weeks, if you felt as if they weren't getting adequate care. And if you did, that would be on you. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Shanice and Dallas. Shanice Grimm claims her client, Dallas Lee, refused to pay for childcare services. Dallas is countersuing for lost wages and emotional distress. So a relative has been taking care of your children? Yes, ma'am. Not all three of them. I had to send my two sons because I had to rearrange my daycare situation. I had to send them back to Texas to be with their dad. So two of them went back to their father? Yes, ma'am. And who do you live with here? I live with my dad. What does he do? My dad is a nuclear medicine technologist. So your stepmom takes care of one of the children. My five-month-old daughter, yes, ma'am. Who's in the house. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to tell me why you didn't pay her for the last two weeks. So my children began in her care September 12th. 
September 13th, she sent me a text message while I was at work and she said, I want to let you know, Lil Mama was bit today by my one year old on her cheek. She sent me a picture. I have this. Not interested. Okay. I mean, it's not that I'm disinterested. It's that don't show me anything from September, madam. You kept your children with her into October and through the end of October. And if anything was so concerning to you that you thought your children would be at risk, I'm certain that you would have discussed it with your father and your father would have Ma said to you, don't speak. And your father would have said to you, if you have a problem with the children, don't let them stay there. What you did, okay, I can see that you're dying to tell me something. What? Yes, ma'am. Dallas's father, Gary. My daughter had no other choice but to keep her children in care because I work a full-time job. Let me explain something to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Your daughter was living with you? Yes, ma'am. Right. There is always an alternative, sir. I have young grandchildren, and I would say if I was legitimate, legitimately concerned for their health and safety, I don't care what it is, stay home and take care of your children. You'll have a roof over your head until you find appropriate take care. And if you didn't do that, then you're not much of a grandfather. Well, you can't use something that happened in September or early October to say, well, that's why I didn't pay the last two weeks. So you can't, make, you can't make excuses, sir. I'm telling you, I'm a grandmother and I've had little children. I don't care what you had to do. Quit my job, whatever that job is, and say, we'll all stay home and take care of the children until you find, or you stay home and take care of the children. I'll provide you with whatever basics you need until you get the right daycare. And if you didn't and do I that, understand. don't tell me that your daughter didn't have a choice. There is always a choice she when your choice. babies are concerned. In our estimation at that time, we were giving her some hard life lessons because she, she does now have three children and there are going to be some difficulties in, in this living situation. There, there are gonna be some things. So what we're doing, we're giving her some tough love and saying, hey, you cannot give up just because the chips are down or because things happen. You have to try to figure things out. Well, that would be on you. That's not on her. This is not her daughter. It's your daughter. Absolutely. And your grandchildren, sir. Absolutely. And if you want to teach her some real hard lessons and say you got to stay with the daycare, even though you're dissatisfied. We said give her a it, chance because it was the first day. So it was a first incident, what, first day. We said give her a chance. Things happen sometimes. What I don't want to hear is from you, who seem like a very intelligent man, a working man, is my daughter had no choice. Your daughter has a choice. Her choice is to say to you, Dad, please, I have to find the right daycare. I have to stop working at this job. I may need a month. You may not have liked her previous irresponsible behavior, mm -hmm. right? Correct. But the deed is done. She got three young children. Beautiful children. Right? So what you do is, when you have three young, beautiful children, you protect them. Absolutely. And if you're not smart enough to protect them yourself, you gotta rely on your father who's smart enough to do that. What I'm saying to you is, your daughter used this lady's services and she has to pay for it. She may not send her children back, but your statement that you were so anxious to make to me, which is, my daughter had no choice, she did have a choice, sir. She did have a choice. Before I would let my children stay in a place where I actually believed, believed that they were being abused, because that's what she's suggesting. I mean, she's not suggesting that this young man who I'm not condoning hitting a three-year-old gave him a slap on the rear end. I'm not condoning that, but there were no injuries to him. I don't know whether you've done it. I don't know whether she's done it to her child. You certainly don't want a daycare provider's child to discipline a three-year-old. Absolutely. That's, that's not what it's about. But after the first incident, what we were trying to teach her is that you don't just throw in the towel because uh, Ms. Grimm was just starting her service up. And September 5th. So we, we understand that there are going to be some, some hiccups and some, some things that she has to fix uh, as she comes across them. Mm -hmm. And so she's a young lady. My daughter's a young lady. So as an older man, I'm, I'm trying to support two individuals to build their lives up. And so I told my daughter, I don't like that she was bitten, but at least she came forward very quickly and told you, so leave them there for now. And if anything else transpires, then we can start to look at things then. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who do you work for, sir? I work for the Veterans Administration. And how long have you worked for the Veterans Administration? 21 years. Do you get paid every two weeks? Yes, ma'am. Let's say your boss at the VA all of a sudden decided they didn't like the work you were doing. And you left and they owed you two weeks pay because you had actually worked for the two weeks. Absolutely. And you sued them for those two weeks. Mm -hmm. You worked there. You said, well, we didn't like the quality of his work for those two weeks. Well, then you fire him. 
How'd you pay him? It's like going to a restaurant. My favorite analogy is you go in to your favorite restaurant where you get a steak. Mm -hmm. And you order a steak, medium, Pittsburgh medium. Steak comes, you cut into it, you take a bite. Oh my God, you say, I don't like the way this tastes. You take the plate, you spit out the bite if you're smart. Call the waiter over and say, this is a bad steak, right? Absolutely. And the waiter takes it off the bill or you order something else. Now you cut into that same steak. You taste, you say, this tastes terrible. Maybe the next bite will taste better. Before you know it, you've finished the whole steak. Waiter comes over to take your clean plate. You say, this steak was awful. I didn't like it. It was bad. Well, what'd you eat it for? But if you ate the steak, you gotta pay for it. If you take a bite and say it's no good, I'm in your corner, send it back. But your daughter ate the steak. She used her services for two weeks and didn't pay her. Well, we can't say that she used her services because there are other, other pieces of evidence she didn't, that we have. Well, you yeah. mean, you're talking about that sometimes she left the children with her husband? Yeah. Yeah, baloney. Your daughter had the benefit of daycare so that she could work. Gary Shrugs, caption, coming up. If you're not satisfied with the service, you stop using the service. If you continue to use the service, despite the fact that you're not satisfied with it, you gotta pay for it. That's America. You got paid, your father got paid, she gets paid. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Shanice and Dallas. Shanice Grimm has accused her client, Dallas Lee, of refusing to pay for childcare services. Dallas claims Shanice wrongfully disciplined and neglected her children. Your daughter had the benefit of daycare so that she could work. Absolutely. And she had the benefit of daycare from this lady that enabled your daughter to make money. But if we're talking breach of contract, the contract was a breach when the husband washed the child. Okay. And the, the Now son. you're not teaching your daughter responsibility. Now you're making excuses. Now you're not teaching your daughter responsibility. Your daughter worked to make money. You worked those last two weeks, didn't stay home with your grandchildren. You made money. Absolutely. The only one that didn't make money and had her three children for those two weeks was the plaintiff. She ate the steak. She used the service. She didn't have anybody else. It's not as if, well, I had to hire somebody else to take care of the kids the last two weeks, even though it was in my deal. So that's why I'm not paying them. She worked, you worked, she worked. And if her husband, if she ran out to the store and left her husband, unless you're telling me that that was such a breach of the agreement that your daughter took the children out of a program. Did she? No, she did not. She didn't say, I'm not allowing your husband to take care of my children, even if it's just for an hour. I'm taking my children out of the program. Dad, can you help me out for the next couple of weeks until I find something else? But you can't eat the steak, which she did. Now you can sit down. Can I say one more thing? Not if you want to continue to look foolish. Now you're not teaching her responsibility. Well, now you're not teaching her responsibility. I don't want to have to teach you responsibility. Well, you don't have to. I'm a veteran. I know what responsibility is. But when you are promoting your, your program as one thing, but your service is another, I cannot say that if Bobby Flay is cooking the steak. It doesn't matter who is cooking the steak. I it was whether you ate I the steak. It's whether you I, ate I the steak. I get what you're saying, Judge. But if it's promoted as Bobby Flay cooking it and Bob Herger cooked it, and yes. I don't like the taste, then those Just are two different second. things. Oh, no, 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 sir. If you're promoting Bobby Flay as cooking the steak and you find, or the hamburger, and you find out that Bobby Flay's younger brother was mm -hmm. cooking the steak or was cooking the burger, mm -hmm. and either way, if the burger is no good, you're not gonna eat it. But you can't eat it and say, well, I really thought I was getting a Bobby Flay hamburger and I didn't get a Bobby Flay hamburger, so I'm not gonna pay for it, even though I ate it. Now you can sit down. How much is two weeks worth of care? $600? Yes, ma'am. Judgment for the plaintiff, $600. You have a counterclaim. Counterclaim is ridiculous. Money owed for lost wages, emotional distress on behalf of the children. You shouldn't have emotional distress on behalf of the children, madam. You are their mother. The first time you had an inkling that you felt that your children, your young children were being neglected in the plaintiff's care, what you should have done was remove them. Remove them. First time. You felt as if three-year-old shouldn't have been subject of a slap by this young man? Great, remove them. You found that the baby, the little one, was bitten by her little one. You say, that's not watching them carefully enough because they 
I think, are supposed to be separated, correct? Yes. No, we were all in one room, so they weren't having to be separated because with me only having less than four children, there was no way of separating because there was only one me. It's a big responsibility to take care of little children. Correct. My daughter shouldn't have been in his reach. She did tell me I, that she I left out of the room. I absolutely agree with you. She left out of the room is what she told me, Judge. So that's actually not true. She told me that she left out of the room and went to the what, kitchen. What day? Give me the date that that happened. September 13th. You left the children there until the end of October. It couldn't have been so disturbing for you, madam, to leave the children there until the end of October, another six weeks, if you felt as if they weren't getting adequate care. And if you did, that would be on you. And maybe a little bit on your father. Because if you told him about it, he said, oh my God, that's terrible. Take my child out right away. All three of them. But you didn't. He left them in there September 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, all the way up until the end of September and the end of October. That's on you. Actually, she did not have them in the end of September because she was suspended from her job. So they were gone for two weeks in September. Were you suspended from your job? I was. I had Just to... Just That's my question. You were suspended from your job. When you were suspended from your job, did you take the children out of daycare? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's reasonable. She didn't give you a problem with that, I assume. No. And you didn't pay for those two weeks? I did not. Great. Well, these two weeks you're going to pay for. Because I don't believe I owe her I, I don't care what you believe. If you're not listening to what I'm saying to you and you're fixed in your opinion, that means you haven't learned anything. Your father tried to teach you a little bit of tough love, what I'm telling you is, if you work, you get paid. If you're not satisfied with the service, you stop using the service. If you continue to use the service, despite the fact that you're not satisfied with it, you gotta pay for it. That's America. You got paid, your father got paid, she gets paid. She didn't get paid for the two weeks she took your kids out. Didn't say to you, well, you have to pay me anyway. I have to keep this open for you. That was very fair. Took the kids out, didn't pay. You left your kids in. You pay $600, you count the claims dismissed. We're finished. This court is adjourned. Outside the courtroom, Dallas, then Shanice. I am a little upset she didn't see things my way. The judge it was kind of in my favor for the majority of it. You know, her leaving my children in the care of her 15-year-old son and also her husband. And why did she continue bringing her children to me for another month? Also, my son letting me know that, you know, she hit him. I have never touched her children. I could take a lie detector test to prove it. It was very, pretty difficult for me because I, I didn't have any other choices. I didn't have anyone else who could help me with keeping all three of my children while I work. She actually never gave me excuses. She actually just told me she was going to pay me. Life is not easy. If you work, you should get paid. But you, you get back up and you keep moving. Sarah and Judy. My generation, I'm not sure about yours, I haven't had much experience in yours, but in mine, I think we confuse having to make a hard choice with being out of options. Here, I felt for the defendant, she had to make a hard choice. For the cost of tools she wrongfully sold. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Kevin approaches Judge Judy. Hello, Judge. How are you? Case 2189, Strums versus Wasinger. Thank you. Judy turns to Andrew. Mr. Scruggs, you have brothers and sisters? No, ma'am. Were your father and your mother? Who predeceased whom? My mother died when I was 17 years old, and uh, my father died in uh, 2019 after okay. a long time illness, and um, okay. he had uh, no, his I'm, tools at my property. You and the defendant were married for 10 years. Correct. You separated in what year? 2016. And when you left, she stayed in the house? That's correct, Your Honor. Sometime prior to 2016, according to you, you borrowed some tools of your father's. That's correct. I actually... Just was... Is that correct? That is correct. And the tools that you borrowed from your father were left in the marital home 2016, 17, 18. Your father died in 2019. You were divorced in 2000. We were, were uh, divorced. divorced in 2019 was the final judgment. And then things sort of got away from you. So now we're in 2023 and you want your father's tools back or money for them, according to you, $10,000 worth. Yes, ma'am. Ridiculous. Let's start out with ridiculous. Where were you in 2019? 
2019 is when my father died, and uh, shortly after he died, I uh, was taking care of uh, his affairs, and we still had a ongoing court case that consisted of our minor children at the time, and I was under advisement of my attorney. <laughs> Don't tell to... me what your attorney advised you. It's hearsay. You did nothing with regard to the tools. In what year did you borrow the tools from your father? It was 2013. I brought the tools over to my That's... storage shed, yeah. and... Mr. Scruggs, you gotta let it go. You haven't had the tools in seven years. You've been out of the house since 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016. What, Your Honor? And you've been, look at you, and you've been living. Who is this? This is my current wife. So, you got divorced, you remarried. When did you remarry? I got remarried in 2018. Well, so you found time to get married, right? Just a second. That's a yes or a no. Yes, you found time to get married. Yes, ma'am. Did you have a big wedding? No, ma'am. You had a small wedding. Do you have any children? Yes, ma'am. With your current wife? Yes, ma'am. How many? One child. How old? She's five. So you managed to have a baby. Well, I'm suggesting to you is, sir, how many different jobs did you have since 2016? I've had two different employers. Since 2016, so you also looked for another job and found another job. So let's see, you got married, you had a child, you changed jobs, but all of a sudden in 2023, the tools are important. Now, how many children did you and the defendant have? Two children. How old are they? I have a 14 year old and an eight year old. You pay child support? No, ma'am. How come? Because uh, one of the children lives with me full time. For how long? She's lived with me full time for approximately three years. But when you and the defendant separated, she was living with her mother. Uh, only for a short amount of time. How long? Probably about a year. Yes, and I paid feet. support during that time. And the other child? Uh, is 45-55 um, split. So that's why you don't pay child support? Correct. And do you work? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. And at some point, so, what do you want to say and why? Just that the reason we were not able to do anything about the tools was the that tools she had an stupid. order of protection. The tools are stupid. Was that she had an order of protection the tool, him. The tools are stupid. Orders of protection don't disqualify you from coming to small claims court. They said that it wasn't able to. Oh, no, I don't, that's, what's a they? Oz? You were allowed to come to small claims court, file a petition and say, these tools belong to me. He didn't do it during the divorce. He didn't do it before your wedding. He didn't do it after your wedding. He didn't do it before your daughter was born. He didn't do it till after your daughter was born. She's now five years old. It's 10 years after the tools were moved from your father's house into the marital home. That would be a fair statement, 10 years. You said 2013, we're now in 2023. Correct, and okay. Your Honor, I do have here where my dad filed a police report where he was trying to recover the tools. Well, unfortunately- And the defendant here obviously lied to this officer here and told them that so I didn't retreat. So what, I want you to forget $10,000, sir. It's not happening for you. Put a period. The only thing that I'm going to consider is she did, in fact, sell the tools that she acknowledges. Now, she can't sell something that doesn't belong to her. And in what year did you sell the tools? I sold the tools. Um, our divorce was signed in 2018. They had gotten married. He'd quit paying a mortgage, so I had to find a way to Just pay. a second. Yes, ma'am. Can't you just tell me in what year did you sell the tools? It was on tools? and off between August and October of 2018. So you sold them piecemeal? Yes, ma'am. And you remember that, so you must have put an ad someplace. I put it on the... ad on Craigslist because I needed to pay the mortgage. And I didn't only sell his tools, I sold jewelry that was mine. I, got, I get it, but you sold it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you have an inventory about First of all, they weren't his tools, they were his father's tools. But I've asked him whether or not he was an only child. He is an only child, so he would stand to inherit these tools unless there was another child that he doesn't know about because his mother predeceased his father. So, Your Honor, I do have an inventory from that. I don't head. care. Understand this. I don't care. Caption, coming up. 
How do you know it was $1,000 if you sold them over a three or four month period? And if the answer to that is I don't know, or I pulled out the number from my behind, then that's an answer. But not that I sold the tools to put food on the table for my children. That's not an answer. And later today. I do have a witness that I brought with me, my daughter, who actually did see. You sure you want to do that? Are you sure you want to do that? Be very careful, Miss Vieira. Are you sure you want to put her there for me to question? Are you sure? A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Andrew and Lori. Andrew Scruggs claims his ex-wife, Lori Watsager, wrongfully sold his father's tools and kept the money. You let it lapse too long. Your father died four years ago. You and the defendant are separated for six years. The tools were there for 10 years. Courts don't care. We use a whole bunch of things, statute of limitations. We use latches. We use all kinds of terms when people don't act quickly to assert their rights to something because we don't want to be bothered with what happened 10 years ago and 12 years ago with this kind of nonsense. We do it with certain things that are important. Crimes are important. So sometimes we let statute of limitations get blurry, but not this. But you sold the tools. You had no right to sell the tools. So he's entitled to the money that you got for selling the tools. Now, according to you, you sold all the tools for how much? A thousand. And how do you know it was a thousand? Because you say you sold it over a period of time. Because um, I have the paperwork where I had submitted so many payments to the mortgage because I sold them just to pay the mortgage and to feed the kids. Listen, I'm going to get out my violin, madam. I asked you a specific question. Yes, ma'am. My specific question is, how do you know it was $1,000 if you sold them over a three or four month period? And if the answer to that is I don't know, or I pulled out the number from my behind, then that's an answer. But not that I sold the tools to put food on the table for my children. That's not an answer. Mm -hmm. How do you know it was $1,000? Because I had put that money into the bank. I paid the mortgage with it. Your Honor, you're exactly right. The defendant here is a liar and a manipulator. Just a, just a second. And she will tell you whatever she thinks that well, you want to hear. Well, that's true, sir. And I don't believe she sold the tools for $1,000, but I don't know that. Because and you did. wait, I, just a second. I, just a second. I what? guarantee you. Oh. I guarantee she made $13,000, $14,000. No, that's possible, sir. Prove it. But proof. Just a second. It's your burden of proof. You have to prove to me that she sold them for $13,000. And even then, you're late in bringing this suit. But you can't prove that. Well, because she is a manipulator, is well, why this ex parte order look, and listen all Listen to me, I don't care. You're not following me. Courts, not me personally, courts, I am the court. We don't care because what you did was wait too long to assert a claim. You waited too long. According to you, you had COVID and the pandemic came in between and, you know, having another child and getting married to somebody else. All those were reasons you had personal issues while you didn't assert your rights in a timely fashion. So we're not going back to try to recreate something that you can't recreate. And neither can she actually, because you don't have to keep track of something that happened three, four years ago. Well, even in the agreed... We're done. Let's, you have to understand. Well, even our agreed judgment that she signed, I have texted her not three months ago trying to retrieve items... Just a second. You have a judgment of divorce that says in the judgment of divorce she is to return the tools to you. No. Okay. The tools that are I'm not, nothing that I'm not, in that judgment. That, that, nothing. Okay. You sold them for $1,000? Yes, ma'am. You can't sell somebody else's property. And that's all that he can prove is what you say you sold them for. And I'm not sure that that's what you sold them for, but he waited too long. And the only thing that I can establish at this point is that you sold somebody else's tools for $1,000. That's it. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,000. This court is adjourned. The defendant, she obviously is a liar and manipulator, and she got a lot more than even the $10,000, and these were what I considered family heirlooms. No, actually, no, I've got the documents for that. Even after my father died, I looked at her and said, you know, we need to just fix this, and, and I came to her and said, you know. Because he can't let me go. If it's a matter of money, let me give you the money for the tools, and she still was sell selling the tools to, uh, we think, her best friend. Because they don't want me happy. I'm sure glad that it's over, and hopefully we can 
um, coexist and uh, take care of our son that we have together. I'd like to be friends. I mean, it's for the children, anything to ha make the children happy. Judy and Sarah. You know what's more fascinating to me than anything else, and I have to when we leave today, I'm going to go back and look up the doctrine of latches. It was a brief I, footnote, I think, in one of our case books. <laughs> right. Because we're talking 60 years ago when mm. I went to law school. And I seem to remember you had both a statute of limitations, which was a formalized statute for mm. certain causes of action, and you had to bring them within a certain period of time. That, I'm sure yes. they taught you with law yes. school. Yes. But I seem to remember, Sarah, there was a doctrine of latches which discusses why you're supposed to bring an action in a timely fashion. More of a common people, sense but, argument but as opposed to preservation of evidence because mm -hmm. people do away with it. And this is a perfect example. I think they call it that. ripeness now, Ripe, but yeah. same, same concept. May, maybe. More of a way for judges like yourself to be able to use common sense in cases like this and say, there's no evidence that's going to be preserved 10 years later. You had all these opportunities. Common sense tells me, therefore, it's not ripe. Yeah. And I think it's a good doctrine because although there might not be a set statute for this particular cause of action, it doesn't mean that evidence just appears out of nowhere that you're going to be yeah, able that you to don't use. Preserve, exactly. That so, you don't preserve it. And certainly, he made a whole lifetime for himself in 10 years. Divorced, remarried, mm -hmm. had a child, had changed jobs, changed careers. A lot can happen There's in lots 10 of, years. Of, yeah, but what's not going to happen is you're getting the tools back. Yeah. Case 2189, Hernandez versus Vieira. All parties, please step forward. Sophia Hernandez is suing her dog sitter, Cherie Vieira, for vet bills after her dog was injured during Cherie's care. Miss Hernandez, how old is your puppy? She's six months, Your Honor. And when she was four months old, you needed a home sitter for your dog. Or yes. you needed a place to board her for a weekend, a yes. weekend. You live on an army base. A it's naval base. Naval base. Mm -hmm. Does the defendant live on the base as well? Yes, Your Honor. And she approached you or whatever and said that she was available for sitting. Is that what you do to make some extra money? Yes, Your Honor. And on the 22nd of December of last year, which is when this incident occurred, you dropped the dog off at the defendant's home. December 16th. Was the 16th? Yes. And when you dropped the puppy off at the defendant's home, she was in perfectly fine shape. Yes. She, she looked very sweet. Thank you. So what happened when she dropped the puppy off at your house? Caption, coming up. I want you to tell me something that I'm gonna believe, that you and your mother were in the room with your 10-year-old sister, and you saw what happened with the dog. Yeah. Just a second. I want you to make sure that that's what you're telling me. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Sophia and Cherie. Sophia Hernandez claims her dog sitter, Cherie Vieira, is responsible for vet bills after her dog, Dolce, was injured during Cherie's care. Because Ms. Hernandez has an outstanding vet bill for surgery on the dog's leg, which was broken, while in your care. Yes, Your Honor. So why don't you tell me how that happened? Ms. Hernandez brought Dolce to our house. Um, we took her in, and um, we had also another that dog. Way, I want you to tell me, yes. you, when you say you took her in, did you or somebody else? Um, it's, it's a family effort. My children also help take care of the dogs. I started watching dogs because my youngest child was deathly afraid of dogs. She was bit by a dog at the age of two. So we started this so she could learn how to take care of dogs properly, know their signs and things like that. And we took Dolce into my daughter's room. Which daughter? Into my youngest daughter's room. Is that you? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. And how old is your youngest daughter? She's 10. OK, so once you took her into your daughter's room, she was alone with the puppy. No, all three of us were in the room. Um, what we like to do is we No, like no, I don't want you to tell me what you like to do. Okay. I want you to be consistent with what you put in your answer. You were all in your daughter's room? Yes, Is we that were... what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Just one second. Judy puts on her glasses, then consults a document. Okay. So your husband was with another dog in the yard. Yes. So I brought this dog into my daughter's room, your 10-year-old daughter's room, to settle down. Yes, Your Honor. And then you don't know what happened because you weren't watching. 
Um, I was actually... No, you were not watching. That's what it says here. Well, I was taking pictures. It doesn't make any difference. You weren't watching. You don't know what happened. If you were taking pictures, that would be on your camera. I have um, pictures here of Dolce that I was actually sending to Mr. No, no, no. Mr. I don't Candace. care. It would be on your camera if you were taking pictures. And if you were taking pictures, then you would have exactly what happened with the dog that caused the dog to have a broken leg. But you don't have those pictures. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. So that you were not watching and you did not see what happened at the moment the dog was injured. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. But I do have a witness that I brought with me, my daughter, who actually did see as I was sending pictures to Ms. Hernandez. You sure you want to do that? Are you sure you want to do that? Be very careful, Ms. Vieira. Are you sure you want to put her there for me to question? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sure. I don't think, yeah, I don't think so. But it's your choice. Let's go. I want you to tell me something that I'm going to believe, that you and your mother were in the room with your 10-year-old sister, and you saw what happened with the dog. Yes. Just a second. I want you to make sure that that's what you're telling me. So you were in the room? Yes, I was. OK. Your first name is? Abigail. I'd like to see a picture of Abigail in the room with the dog when you were sending pictures, allegedly, to the plaintiff of the dog. I just want to see pictures of her in the room. Uh, Your Honor, I did not make pictures of those. Why not? She was there. You were taking pictures of the dog. I assume your 10-year-old's room is not the size of this courtroom. So no. if you were taking pictures, Abigail would be in those pictures. Your Honor, I actually have a picture of her leg <laughs> after I was bit by Dolce. I don't care after you were bit by Dolce. You were bit by the puppy yes. because she was injured. Yes, Your Honor. OK. That was after she was injured. Yes. I want to see a picture of your daughter that you were taking pictures of, allegedly to send to the plaintiff to show her how the dog was adjusting. I do not have pictures of that, right. Your Honor. Yeah. Ms. Vieira, do you want to know the truth? I don't believe you were in the room with your daughter, either one of them, and the puppy. I think that you left the puppy with your 10-year-old, and you don't know what happened. That's what I believe. And whether the, I believe, and it's accurate or not accurate, the dog was injured in your care. So you're responsible for the surgical bill. It's that simple. Dog got a broken leg in your care with enough adults there to watch the dog. Your husband, the older daughter, and you put her in the room with your 10-year-old because you thought it would be cute. Your 10-year-old wanted to play with her. That's what happened. Can I see the vet bill, please? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> I have the urgent care bill and the surgery bill as well. Sophia hands a document to Kevin, who brings it to Judy for review. So the invoice was 5818 for the surgery and 862 6608 judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. This court is adjourned. You know, I'm happy because those vet bills are really high. You know, it's not something that you could take on at the time. I was in the room with the dog. The dog jumped from the floor and it was a freak accident. But my dog was healthy, you know? She had just been at the vet. She's gotten her shots. She was healthy. I still don't know. I researched online. I think maybe that the dog already had an injury prior. She was at my house 25 minutes. I would never drop off my dog like that. She jumped up to retrieve a toy out of my daughter's hand from the floor, a fluffy carpet, and she landed and cried. With a pre-existing condition, I would watch her myself. About three minutes after, I called her mom to let her know that she was hurt, injured. You know, my heart dropped. You know, I was upset we didn't go on the trip, but just my baby turned around. She wanted to know how bad it was because she wanted to go on her trip. And I told her it was bad enough for her dog to bite me. We took her straight to the urgent care. I asked her to come back to get her dog. I didn't want to move the dog. So um, she came back and had us bring the dog out. She had a fractured leg. Freak accident. Kind of feel like, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't fair. They didn't give me one. They just ignored my messages asking for payment. I'm glad the dog's okay. Dilta's great. Her leg is healed. She's on a recovery program. Judy and Sarah.
for an assault. Judy enters the courtroom. Court come to order, all rise. She takes her seat behind the bench. Have a seat, everyone. Kevin approaches. Hello, Judge. Case number 2035, Rodriguez versus Gastelum. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. What kind of a premises do you live in, sir? It's a four bedroom house. And I see here that you rent out some of the rooms in order to assist with your mortgage. That's correct. How many rooms do you rent out? Three. And who lives in the other? Right now it's Kathleen Meister, and then I have two other roommates. And you use one room? Correct. When did you rent a room to the defendant? It was January 22. And what was the rent that you were charging him? 750 a month. When he came to you, did he have a dog? No. When did you move in? About late January. Give me a day. 22nd. And you moved in alone? Yes, ma'am. Paid your rent on time? Yes, ma'am. February, paid your rent on time? Yes, ma'am. Lived there alone? Yes, ma'am. What about March? Did I live there alone in March also? Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. When did you get a dog? I've had my dog. Now, when did you get a dog that you brought into the house? April 22nd, 23rd. So several months after you moved in. Mm-hmm, mm hmm, mm -hmm. A hum is not an answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And before you moved the dog in, did you have a discussion with the plaintiff? Yes, ma'am. Just yeah. prior to moving in with the dog, and what was the discussion that you had with the plaintiff? That if it was okay if I were to bring my dog for, that I had in Alaska, since I had him since he was about six, seven weeks. And where had he been in the last two months? Um, he was still in Alaska, staying with uh, close friends, and I flew to Seattle, shipped my truck and all my belongings to Seattle and drove here. Uh, from Seattle, well, my dog, the person who was watching him, drove from Alaska to Montana and had so, gone to Montana to pick him up. So you asked Mr. Rodriguez if it was okay if you brought your dog? Yes, ma'am. And what did he say? Yes. Did he say anything else? He said, just clean now up. look at me. He said, clean Did he say anything he else said, other than... after the dog, make sure that the dogs don't fight, and just take care of him. Okay. Nothing about him staying out of the house. He said he wouldn't prefer him to be around the house, but he would not, it would be okay for him to be in my room. In your room? Mm hmm The dog stayed with me in that room a few nights, and he knew, knowingly knew about it. No, I don't want to know what he knew. I want to know what your arrangement was. So your arrangement with him, according to you, not, I haven't asked him, but according to you, is that you asked him if you could bring your dog. He said okay mm -hmm. for the dog to stay outside, but could stay in your room. He said he didn't want him in the living area. He, my dog right. could also be in the garage or... In, in your room. And was everything okay in April when you brought the dog? Yeah, everything was What fine. about May? May, I was looking for a new place. I was homeless because I had spent five days in jail. Oh, I'm talking about before you went to jail, sir. Before um, you went to jail, because this case is about an assault, which is what the plaintiff is claiming. Plaintiff is claiming that you assaulted him in the home, mm -hmm. and that took place on April 30th. Mm -hmm. That was shortly after your dog arrived. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the dog was the reason for the altercation. A well, part of the reason, but that's in how it started. February, March, and up until April, the end of April, when the dog was there, I see no evidence here that there was any difficulty. You're right. A fair We've... statement? Yeah. So that the problem arose when the dog came. Now, this woman's name is Kathleen. She's interspersed in both the complaint and the answer. In this case, she had a cat. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not an answer. Yes, ma'am. He had a cat. And it was a house cat. Yes, ma'am. Plaintiff has a dog. A few dogs. And they live in the house. Yes, they stay in the garage and in the backyard, yes. Garage and backyard, do they stay in the house? They do not go inside that. Okay, so his dogs stay outside, and he said to you, according to you, the dogs can stay outside in the garage and in your room. Yes. In April, did your dog get out of your room or into the house? Yes. Yes, on what date? April 30th because I was allowing him inside to go to my room. On April 30th, the dog was where? In the backyard, but I was bringing him inside to come to my room. You were bringing him from outside to come into your room. Mm -hmm. I haven't asked him. He says in his papers that the dog was supposed to remain outside. You were bringing him inside to your room. Yes, ma'am. Because it is your claim here that it is an emotional support dog. Yes, ma'am. And you also had at least a couple of months where you left the dog in Alaska. With right? people I trust. I don't care people who you trust or not. If you need an emotional support animal, the emotional support animal has to travel with you. So don't show me a certificate. 
can't stand. Yes, ma'am. By the way, did that certificate that you have come from a psychiatrist? Uh, no. No. Did it come from a psychologist? No. Did it come from any doctor who was treating you? It was a doctor's note, yes. Was a doctor who was treating you? Yes. Yes. Not a psychiatrist? Not a psychiatrist, no. Not a psychologist? Not a psychologist. And you took this note and you had to send it to somebody over the internet? Yes. And then they sent you a certificate? Yes. And I, with that, ID. That's what I got. Okay, so now you're bringing the dog on April 30th from the backyard into the house and? He attempts to grab the dog. No, no, no. Is the dog on a leash? No, he's very well- Just a sec. Is the dog on a leash? No. Were you holding the dog by the collar? Yes. And now you're taking the dog from outside to inside. What did he say to you? No dogs in the house. Because that's what he had said to you before. You can have your dog, but no dogs in the house. I want to tell you something. That's what I believe. So he said, no dogs in the house, and you said to him... I'm going to bring my dog into my room. But when you asked him if you could bring the dog to the house, there is no question in my mind that he said to you, bring the dog to the house, but the dog doesn't come into the house. He stayed in my room a few nights prior to I that. I don't I mean, care. Already Listen to me. That's it. what the arrangement was, sir. Okay. The arrangement was not what you told me before. The arrangement was with him, yes, you can bring the dog to the house, I let you do that, but the dog has to stay either in the garage or outside like my dogs. Okay. And you said, in effect, screw you, I'm bringing my dog and I'm bringing my dog into my room. In You're the tenant, that was the agreement. You can have the dog, but the dog must not be in the house. That's what your landlord told you. You brought the dog from Alaska and at the very beginning, you brought the dog into your room. Mm -hmm. When had you decided that you were going to breach the agreement with him? The very first night I went to receive my dog, he stayed at the house inside my room with me. So the very first night that you brought him, you decided to breach the agreement that he you had. He had knowingly said it was okay. Did you tell him it was okay? Never. I have texts. I'd like to see it. I have to scroll back. Scroll to wherever while. you have to scroll. Scroll yes. down to the creation. I don't care. I have all day here. <laughs> Nobody is hungry. I'm a Still little have hungry. two more cases to do before lunch. Everybody gets a little testy, including me. I don't have the text. Hmm? I do not have the text. Yeah, good. That's what I thought. Okay. It wasn't on the 30th that the dog got loose in the house. It was sometime before that, maybe a day or so before that. On the 30th was a day, sir, that you got locked out of the house. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, it's not Honor. an answer. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And what time of the day was it that you got locked out of the house? Two o'clock, after, middle afternoon, late afternoon. And According to what I read, you went to the back of the house to let yourself into the house, and you got into an altercation with Kathleen. Absolutely, she shouldn't have put her hands on and slapped you because you were fresh. Because you wouldn't be fresh to me, right? Fresh? Fresh. That's what you say to a child. Fresh. How old are you? 65. How old are you? 25. That's fresh. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Armando and Samuel. Armando Rodriguez claims his former tenant, Samuel Gastelou, is responsible for damages from an assault. Samuel says he was the one assaulted and falsely arrested. Now, you got into an altercation with Kathleen. Not quite, Your Honor. Well, tell me what happened. I had been outside, I went out the garage, and I was playing a time-sensitive game on my Xbox. So I was going back to the room, and I knocked on the garage door, no one answered, knocked on it a few times, pounded. Then I went back around and knocked on the, on the siding glass door a few times, one of the few times. Finally, Kathleen comes up and answers the door. At that point, I've been out there for about 10 minutes. So I'm upset. I'm like, who locked me out? Who locked the door? She gets completely defensive. She says, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. And I'm like, I'm asking who it was because Armando and I had discussed. Because you're on a time-sensitive yes, video game. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So you were on a time-sensitive yes, video game. Time How sensitive. old are you? 25 years old. Okay, so now you're on a time-sensitive video game and somebody either on purpose or accidentally locked the door and you think it's Kathleen. No, I did not accuse anyone. I okay. just asked was who locked me out, who locked me out, because I had been locked out did, earlier that week. Again, did you, earlier by Armando. Did, just a second, did you have a key to uh, the house? On my... No, no, no. Did you have... I had a front door key, key, not to the garage door, not to the sliding door. But you had a front door key. Yes, Your Honor, but there's a gate. There's a big fence, and I didn't have a key to the gate that was locked. You couldn't get into the house yes. even with your front door key. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what you're telling yes, me? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, 
after you had a conversation with her, there was no physicality between the two of you? Not at that moment. But once Armando came around the corner, he's like, it was me who locked you out. So me and him started. Now, just a second. He said, it was me that locked you out. Mm -hmm. Did he say he did that on purpose or was it? was an accident, is what he said. Did he say? Okay. So he said, it was me that locked you out. It was an accident. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the uh -huh, first time. It's not yes, Your Honor. That's yes. First, second, I've locked my children out of the house many times, sometimes on purpose. I'm not his child. By accident. I'm his roommate. It doesn't make any difference. So he said to you, it was an accident. And you said to him? It's happened before. Or, and he said to you? Those were accidents also. Okay. And he said those were accidents also. Yes. And you said to I him? I said you need to be more attentive, more aware. If someone had just walked out and left the door unlocked, you should probably go and see if anyone's out there before you turn around and lock the door. And he said? He said he apologized. He okay, said, so he said, I apologize. Yes. Okay, what's next? During that, that whole conversation, me and him are, are arguing. Okay, but forth. at the end, he said, I'm sorry. He said, I apologize. It's not so clear cut. It's well, it's at the end of this back and forth. You shouldn't. You should have been more careful. You should look to see who's at the door. You've done it before. I'm sorry. It was an accident. I apologize. Now I have an apologize. And In next. In the middle of that altercation, Kathleen kept butting in. She said, you don't talk to me like that. You don't talk to me like that. I said, I wasn't even talking to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm talking to Armando. I said, mind your own business. She said, oh, you don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me what to do. I said, mind your own business. She said, say that to me one more time. And I said, mind your own business. She walks across the hall and she slaps me across the face. And Armando grabs her hand right after she smacks me. And instead of retaliating aggressively or any type of thing, I call the police, immediately call the police. And while we're waiting there for the police, that's when I get the apology from Armando. That's when he's like, okay, let's make a deal. Let's try to work this out before the police get there. The police get there. They ask me what had happened. And, you say, what and you say that this older woman slapped you because yeah, you were across fresh. The face. Because you were fresh. No, because she, she shouldn't. Believes she shouldn't she, have put her hands on and slapped you because you were fresh. Fresh, because you wouldn't be fresh to me, right? Fresh? Fresh. That's what you say to a child. Fresh. You were being fresh. And she should not have put her hands on you. Would I have called the police about that? Hmm, maybe. Except but I am not let a me, child. Let just a sec I'm not a child. I'm not related to these people. I just said to you, you were being fresh. How old are you? 65. How old are you? 25. That's fresh. That's fresh, because first you accused her of locking you out. I didn't accuse then, her. Yeah. Okay, so after she slapped you, the police arrived, they left. She said, she slapped you, yes. We have marks, you have cuts, you have bruises, you have abrasions. No, they left. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you expect when you called the police for them to arrest her? What I did just, you want them to do, sir? Uh, was what I supposed to did you want, How was I what? supposed to retaliate? Was just I supposed to hit her back? Just a second, no. Okay, then what was no. I supposed to do? I'm not telling you what to do. Okay. I'm just asking you, sir, did you expect them when you called the police to arrest Kathleen because she slapped you. No, I expected there to be consequences for her assaulting me. What, so I don't what, know what did the you think, so were. what did you think that they are. should do? Whatever they feel was right, uh, okay. whatever is justice. Okay, now let's move on. Mm -hmm. So now the police are gone and? I go speak to Armando, I asked why he sacrificed his integrity for lying for Kathleen, for saying that she didn't slap him because he told the police he witnessed no such event. He didn't see nothing, even though he was standing right there, grabbed her hand. Kathleen says she didn't do it. And the police came up to me before they left. They said, they're telling me something else. I just straight up, I just don't believe you. I was just like, okay, well, what else can I do? I go to Armando and I'm like, why, why would you sacrifice your integrity? Why would you lie to the police? Why would you let another roommate physically assault me and just no consequences whatsoever? And at that point is uh, when I tried to bring my dog inside and just go straight to my room. Just a I, second. So at that time, <clears> after <throat> this hot spot is over. It got heated again. Got, got heated again. Mm -hmm. Your reaction was childish. And you said, I'm going to get my dog mm -hmm. that I was told not to bring in the house. And I'm going to bring my dog in the house. I was going to my house. Just a second. I don't care if you were going to Pluto. Your reaction after this was, they can't tell me what to do. I'm going outside and I'm gonna bring my dog inside. He'll let you bring the dog to the house, but the dog can't come in the house, stays outside with his dogs. There's only one animal in the house and that's Kathleen's house cat. That's it. So you went to bring your dog from outside to in the house. Yes, Your Honor. In violation of the agreement that you had with your landlord. After the police had come, I just want you to realize what's going on. Oh, I... You know, I'm, I just want you to realize that they don't actually keep me here because I'm five, six and gorgeous. 
I understand what happened when you were disappointed that Kathleen had slapped you like a child because you were fresh and she's not your mother and she had no right, even your mother doesn't have a right to put their hands on you. Correct. But you got slapped, not injured, no broken jaw, no broken skin. Police didn't see anything because if they did, they would have arrested somebody and they left. And you were royally miffed because you got locked out of the house for which he apologized, you missed your time-sensitive video game. Now, I'm not sure what that is, because I'm not a 25-year-old idiot that plays video games during the day. Caption coming up. A courthouse. The Judy Justice logo appears. In the courtroom, Armando and Samuel. Armando Rodriguez is accusing his former roommate, Samuel Gastelum, of breaking their rental agreement and assaulting him. Samuel claims he was falsely arrested after Armando lied to the police. Now, several things had happened that day, right? You got locked out and you were playing a time-sensitive video game. Yes, Your Honor. And because you got locked out of the house for which he apologized, you missed your time-sensitive video game. Now, I'm not sure what that is, because I'm not a 25-year-old idiot that plays video games during the day. When I was 25 years old, I actually worked. Mm. I did, I actually worked. I know that may seem foreign to you, but I did actually work. And so after all of this altercation took place, you said, now I'm gonna show him, now I'm gonna bring my dog into the house. And then there was another altercation. Second yes. one, yes. that's the one we're talking about. By the way, maybe I'm being terribly unkind to you, sir. How do you support yourself? I work. For whom? Pretty foreign, I know. For whom? I'm a cultivator. You work five days a week? Yes, Your Honor. And in my free time, what do you I, cultivate? I like to play video what do you games. Cul what do you cultivate? Marijuana, cannabis. How long have you worked for them? Since March, so about five months. Prior to that, you were in Alaska. Prior to January, I was in Alaska. And I, before March, before getting the job at the cultivation facility for cannabis, I was uh, helping my uncles do concrete. So working isn't very foreign to me, as you might see. Prior to March, you were working with your uncles in concrete. Yes, Where? Your Honor. In Victorville, in California. You were, working, I, I have, you were working for your uncle prior to March, getting a job as a cultivator. And what I want to know is, how long had you been separated from your emotional support dog? I spent four months away from him. And those four months were from January to April. For January, job, February, March, April. And what were you doing in Alaska? I was born and raised no, no. in Alaska. No, no, Alaska was, is not a born, that's not a job, sir. What were you doing in Alaska? I was, for the last six months of my time in Alaska, I was a bud tender. Okay, tell me what happened after the dog incident. Well, the dog comes in, he says that he's not gonna follow house rules anymore. He says as, as of right now, he's gonna do what he wants to do. So he just gets the dog from the backyard and he, he comes inside the house. And I feel that it's my responsibility to enforce the house rules. So I physically grab his dog and I move the dog from inside the house to the backyard. That happens once. He gets the dog and then he physically puts him back in the house. Where in the house? This is, you could say the kitchen area. So now I basically attempt to repeat what I did the first time. So I physically grab the dog a second time and I'm now physically taking him out. At which point he gets from behind me and he puts me into a chokehold and I black out. I come to, I look for my phone, I find my phone, dial 911, police show up like in maybe two or three minutes and I'm still trying to get-, get. And that's the assault that you are referring to yes, today. Did the EMS check you out? I was taken to the hospital. May I see the report? Yeah, I got a report and then I helped. He produces a document. The bills associated with okay. them. With was Kathleen a witness to this? She saw, she saw- No, like, don't tell me what she saw. Was she a witness to any part of that? Yeah. The yes or no? Yeah. Okay, would you step up, please? Kathleen stands at Armando's side. Tell me at what point you came in on this altercation. When they were arguing about the dog. The first time or the second time? Well, you don't know whether- uh, I don't really know. Were you a witness to any of the physical confrontation that resulted in Mr. Rodriguez going to the hospital? I knew that they- don't tell me what you knew. Okay. What you saw. Okay, what I saw was Armando 
trying to put the dog back outside because he's a big pit bull, right? And then he would put him out and then um, Samuel would bring him back in. And then the last time Armando was putting him back outside and Samuel came behind Armando. And what I did was I left and went and called the police because I was afraid he was going to get hurt. All right, sir. Now tell me your version of those events. Could I show her statement from the previous court? No, I want you to first tell me your version of the events. So I let Apollo inside. My dog's name is Apollo. And he's going to grab Apollo to let him out. And we're both kind of grabbing Apollo, pulling him, trying to, we're both kind of fighting over him a little bit. As I'm pulling him inside more, Armando uh, starts grabbing me. And so we get into this altercation and we're like wrestling back and he's forth. He's just a second. He's trying to get your pit bull outside and at the same time he's grabbing you? Is that the... No, it was. For, we were both grabbing the dog. So you were trying to keep the dog inside and he was trying to I put was the dog to outside. I to my room, yes. Take him. You were trying to take him to your room. He was trying to put him outside. Yes, And? Right. As we're both kind of fighting for the dog, he grabs me. He lets go of the dog and then grabs me. How did he grab you? He grabs me by the arm and then he like starts uh, tugging a little bit. And so we're wrestling. We just start wrestling and it gets a little bit more violent. And I go to restrain him and he's uh, he's hitting me. He's getting, hitting me from the uh, with his arms. He's trying to scratch me. And I just restrained him until I felt not threatened no more. I released him. I get up. I grab my dog. I go to the room. And I call the police. Mm -hmm. Do you have your medical records that day? They would not take me. They didn't. They're not they would not take you. Do you have your medical records for that day? I have my arrest report that says apparently they didn't. May I see take the pictures. arrest report, please? They, would, they refused to take pictures. Don't tell me they what refused. they didn't do. I could read. Kevin takes the document from Samuel, then brings it to Judy. Do you have medical insurance, sir? No. None. Okay, so you had an emergency room CT scan that was $8,640.62. The other bill for that day was for radiology, which was... $518. This is the emergency room, which was $1,109. Okay, well, that takes us over this court's limit jurisdictionally. Now, you, sir, subsequently had a hearing with regard to this case. Is that correct? Yes. Did you testify, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Did you testify, sir? I did. At the end of that hearing, was there a restraining order granted or not? It was granted. For how long? Do you have a copy of that? I have a copy. Yes. It was a year. So a judge like me, probably not as good looking, <laughs> after hearing, so I don't have to hear it, all of the evidence, the judge found that there was more evidence than not that you assaulted the plaintiff and granted the plaintiff an order of protection for one year. After that happened, you were still in the house. After the assault or after the hearing? After the assault. After the assault, I was arrested and- And then you came back to the house. Yes, Your Honor. That's what I asked, you were still in the house, but yeah. you're no longer in the house. No. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're finished here, thank, thank you. you. This court is adjourned. He's a liar and I, I told the truth and I won the case. I didn't aggressively attack him. That was the rules that I, I had set. My dogs don't even come in the house. I defended myself and my dog. Sarah and Judy. I think there was some genuine confusion on the defendant's behalf about the term fresh. When I said to him, you were, f were fresh to an older person. Exactly, you know, he had a little bit of an attitude, a little.